All right, guys, so we're going to do a little midday market recap here, a little on the earlier side. Um, go over the trades from today. Overall, extremely disappointing day. I'm not happy with how I traded. Um, I sh would have been better not even coming to the market today. I didn't take my own advice that I said right at the bell, which on um, AXT or AKTX, that on this gapper, I wouldn't chase it out of the gates. And as I was watching it, um, I, it squeezed up right out of the gates all the way to 995 or actually to $10. And as I saw it right up there at 995, I said, I'm waiting for the first one minute candle for a one minute pullback. So first one minute candle to pull back and then I'll buy the first candle to make a new high. And instead, I impulsively jumped in at 995 with 2,500 shares. And I really don't know what, why I did that. I just, I sort of saw it squeezing up and I thought it would, it looked so strong that it was going to break over the whole dollar. Um, it was breaking over the 200 moving average, which looked good, but it didn't wait for a proper entry. I promptly lost $2,800 as it dropped here. I had my stop. I mean, it was instantly, I was instantly down 50 cents and I was like, well, I'll just give this a second. And then it was down to 9.15. I bailed out and I got filled at 8.80. I got 40 cents of slippage. I mean, it was just disgusting. And so this is a really disappointing trade. I lost over a dollar per share with 2,500 shares. I mean, it's a really just embarrassing thing to do. I was impulsive. I didn't wait for the good setup. I chased it. And the market reminded me why the market's always stronger. You have to wait for good quality, low risk setups. And if you chase entries, this is what happens. Now, fortunately, you know, I had a big cushion on the week and I've had a big cushion on the month and even on the year, which you know, has allowed me to, you know, take these hits and not have them be that painful, but it's just very disappointing. So, um, so that was a $2,800 loss. I'll show you my PL here. I'm finishing the day down five grand. $2,800 loss on AKTX, and then I made back $2,800 on HTGM. I got into HTGM. Uh, I saw it spiking up, and on this one, I thought, okay, this is a uh, the first daily candle to make a new high on the, on the daily chart right here. So I was like, that looks good over 8. And I got in this one at 814 with 10,000 shares right here, 814. We popped up to a high of 36, dropped down, popped up, dropped down. I sold um, right on this candle here. So I actually went from being down $2,800 to up $1 on the day. And at that point, I should have just, I mean, I should have just walked away. I don't know why I felt I should continue trading given the fact that my first trade was so bad and this trade just kind of barely got me back to flat. Uh, one trade on PULM, which was nothing really there. Um, and then, you know, I saw AUXO was on the scanners. I looked at the daily chart and I was like, you know, the daily chart does look good. It looks like it, it's a breakout setup over 550. And so on the five minute chart, I saw we had this pullback here. We had a high of 22 and then we pulled back. And so I was like, all right, you know what? That actually doesn't look too bad, which is true. And I jumped in um, with 10,000 shares at 520. And then I added at 530, uh, it was like right around 535, thinking that it was, that I like to add into strength and thinking that it was going to break over 540 and go up to 550, 560, and open up the way we've seen a lot of stocks open up in the last few days. And that's not what happened. In the next candle, we dropped all the way down to 506. I held through this consolidation. At this point, I was like, well, this is either going to be a, I mean, I, this, I, it's going to be a loss. I mean, most likely, I'm trying to minimize the loss. I want to try to get out on the ask. So I was like, all right, well, I'll let this consolidate on the five-minute chart, and I'm going to wait for the first five-minute candle to make a new high. But unfortunately, you can see we sold off. And when I sold, I got 
20 cents of slippage, which was an extra $2,400 of loss with 12,000 shares. So that's the challenge of trading with large size, and it shows the limit to scalability. Um, you know, and I'm just, I'm really frustrated with myself because I had said I need to be careful. It's Friday. I had said yesterday and the day before that I need to scale back because I'd had a really nice hot streak and I didn't want to give back $1,000. I mean, I said all of these things out loud. And then I just jumped into AKTX or whatever that one was, lost 2800 And I think that kind of just got me emotional and frustrated, got into HTGM with big size, made it back, but I just still was in this really frustrated state of mind, saw the next setup, jumped in it, thinking more about the potential and less about the risk. And then next thing you know, I'm, you know, down five grand on the day. So it's a good time to step back a little bit. Um, I'm finishing the month up 29,000, which is disappointing. Last month I made 68,000. So $29,000 is a pretty disappointing month. And um, I had this month I had one, two, three, four, five red days. And those five red days totaled $20,000 in losses. So this could have been a $50,000 month if I could have controlled those losses a little bit better. And, but even today, you know, even, I mean, it just goes to show how, um, you know, the challenge that every trader faces, momentary lapses in judgment. I mean, it only took me, uh, you know, four taps of my hockey to load up 10,000 shares of AUXO. I mean, it, it didn't, that was easy. It didn't take more than a, more than a second to get a full position and suddenly realize this is not a good thing. This is going to be a problem. This thing is has a lot of hidden sellers. It doesn't seem like it's opening up. And now if I try to just get out, I'm probably going to lose um, on the slippage. Because of the fact that it's weighted so heavily, it shows you that there's an imbalance between sellers and buyers. There were more sellers. So there weren't enough buyers you know, to absorb my big order. There were enough sellers to take it, but not enough buyers. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is definitely, I mean, I, I, I'm just, I'm annoyed with myself because this is not how I like to finish the month. I don't like to finish on a, on a red day. This is exactly what I did in January. January, I was up $55,000, and the last day of the month, I lost fifteen grand. And I don't, I don't know if there's anything to do with it being the last day of the month or if that's not the issue it's i don't know um for whatever reason though and that was a tuesday it wasn't a friday so i don't know if there's any correlation there but um i'm glad that we're going into the weekend and i can step back a little bit so i'll open on monday around 105,000 uh in in this account which you know is obviously still impressive from the 583 dollar uh starting balance but I hit 100K on March 8th, and so in the last, you know, one, two, three and a half weeks, I've only made $5,000 because I lost 15, and then I had to make back 15. At, you know, I made back 25, and now I've lost five. So it's like, you know, this is one of the things with trading. Sometimes it feels like you're treading water, um, and you have to be so calculated about being aggressive on eight quality setups and then scaling back that aggression when the market's not on your side, you know, harnessing that desire to be aggressive and, you know, to get out there and try to get the biggest win will help you have five, $10,000 winning days. I made 5,000 on Monday, 4,200 on Tuesday, but you need to adapt to the market. And today started off just on the complete wrong note with me being super aggressive and chasing a setup, breaking a rule. I, ch I chased a setup. That was, that was bad. Um, and then HCGM was a good quality setup. Size was risky. AUXO was an okay setup, but my size was also too risky given the fact that I had just had, you know, 
a really rough start to the day, and I wasn't adapting to that. So, uh, you know, I, I like to talk about my losing days because I think that you guys can definitely, um, you know, learn a lot from them. I mean, when you see a big winning day, it's easy to just kind of be like, yeah, I took this trade at the perfect spot, and it worked out perfectly. Well, what about a time where I take a trade at the perfect spot, and it doesn't work out perfectly? I get the false breakout. How do I handle that? So in the case of AUXO, I held through consolidation, and I was thinking that I would wait for the first five-minute candle to make a new high. Unfortunately, I couldn't keep waiting. I hit my max loss. But there are other times where this would consolidate. First five-minute candle to make a new high, it would go right back to high a day. It just didn't happen on this stock. Though generally, I would prefer not to put myself in the position where I'm holding through consolidation because I'm red on the trade. That means I'm in a little too high. So the second mistake on this was adding at 35 or whatever it was, 37. That was being too aggressive. And I think that, you know, sometimes when you get knocked down, you jump back up and you just want to, you know, get back on the horse. But what you really need to do is just take a breather. And that's what I need to do today. And uh, for whatever reason, I I wasn't able to recognize that in the moment. Um and so mindfulness, you know, coming back to that presence of self to say, OK, Ross, you're down really pretty badly on one stock. You got yourself back to break even on HTGM. Consider it, you know, a wash. Walk away for the day. What, what are you doing? Why are you taking 12,000 shares of uh, a stock when you just narrowly avoided being at max loss? So, um I don't know. I I think that it's just one of these things that traders struggle with. And um, so today was a day that um, the market got the best of me and I'm walking away with less money than I started with. But overall, it's been a decent week. I'm still closing the week up um, just under 5,000. But this month has been uh, difficult for sure. I have not seen the same level of um, follow. I mean, we had, you know, that really rough patch in the middle of the month, uh, a week of just basically we had two weeks of almost no momentum. Uh, and then it bounced. We bounced back last Friday. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'll just have to continue to be mindful going into April as I start a new month. I want to build the cushion, not get uh too aggressive early in the month, just kind of try to build up that cushion a little bit, get myself into the driver's seat on the month. And then once I'm um, green, you know, if we're seeing some good opportunities, I can start to, um, you know, scale up a little bit. But just to start, I'm going to kind of dip my toes in the water, get a sense of the climate on Monday. Um, but today we didn't have very good momentum. And AK, AKTX, I didn't think it was going to be good because I'm just so annoyed I traded it because. I said I don't like it because that and the move started after hours and it's so extended. And so I, I don't know what drove me to jump in that so high. Um, I don't know why I let um, let the, that emotion get the best of me today, but maybe it's just been a long week and um, wasn't as focused as I should have been. So. That's it for today. I um, hate to do a red day recap at the end of the week, and I know I'll be thinking about it all weekend, but um, it, it is what it is. And the good news is that I'm still ending the week green. I'm still ending the month green. $29,000, although it's not um, what I was hoping to do, is, is still respectable. Um, I'm probably my own you know, worst critic, and I hold myself... I try to hold myself to a high standard and of performance. And if I'm not hitting that, um, it's frustrating. So I know comparatively to how I was, you know, a couple years ago or whatever, this is certainly good and I'm, I'm doing really well. But, um, you know, when you get used to doing 40, 50,000, 60,000 a month, a month where you come in 50% short is a little disappointing. <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, having that many red days, having that red streak, it's just not something that I'm uh, super pleased with. So I suppose my goal for April 
Um, maybe less than a monetary goal would be the goal to uh, not have, if at all possible, a multi-day red streak, you know, where I have a real drawdown, um, you know, and, and just to kind of start to get back on a steady grind. If you looked at my equity curve for the month of March, you know, it was it was up and then down a lot, back up and down. I mean, it's just not as steady as I'd like it to be. And, you know, that adds more stress, you know, when you're kind of jumping all over the place, up five, down five, it definitely adds a little more stress. So I'd, I'd like to kind of avoid that if I could. But uh, it's on me. I mean, it's it's on me to maintain emotional control, to be disciplined on every trade I take, to focus on A-quality setups, to not chase stocks. And, um, you know, I'll obviously, you know, be back in the saddle first thing Monday morning and, um, you know, walk you guys through what I'm looking at. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to be a, um, a good set, set a good example and, and, you know, maintain discipline the way I say that you should and, um, you know, point you guys in the right direction when it comes to good quality setups. Today, I, we were looking at the right type of stocks. I just, the entries weren't, um, the entries and the sizing were the problems. So anyways, that's it for today. Um, and we'll bounce back first thing on Monday morning. All right. I'll see you guys then. Let's be honest. If you made it this far, you must have really enjoyed that video. So what's stopping you? Subscribe right here and get email alerts anytime I upload new content. Until then, happy surfing.